Hey, I'm Jay. And I'm Jamie. And this is Colin. And today, we're gonna make an Arduino-powered, 3D-printed skull temperature humidity sensor thingy. this thing again this is a temperature and humidity sensor that we're gonna keep right here in the wood shop to tell us the temperature of the room but also by the color of the light the relative humidity in here and why do we need to know the humidity well we live in central Texas and we get massive swings in humidity on like a weekly basis and if you're a woodworker you know that that can really screw up your projects and you've got an Arduino in there right yep this thing is Arduino powered so we've got lots of components we've got batteries, we've got the Arduino, we've got an LCD screen, we've got lights, we've got the sensor, we've got all sorts of cool stuff, and we're going to show you how we built it. We started with a piece of walnut that was about 12 inches long and a couple inches thick. We chose walnut because it looks really nice and it's easy to work with, but you could use any type of wood for this. We milled it down to final size before bringing it over to the table saw to rip it down to width and then cross cutting it to length on the sled. The clamp on the sled acts as a stop block, which helps us make sure that the top and bottom and left and right pieces are exactly the right size. We've got our four walls cut and it's time to move on to the joinery. Now, if we take a look at our plans, you can see it calls for dovetail joints all the way around. Dovetail joints are kind of fancy and probably overkill for something like this, but they look badass and I like making them, so that's all the reason we need. We're going to cut the tails first, so we lay out where we want them to be and how deep they are. I think there's like 400 ways to cut dovetails, but for this project we're going to cut them on the table saw with this cool jig that attaches to the miter gauge. We set up a stop block and then set the angle of the blade and then make all of our cuts. From there, we just have a little bit of cleanup to do with a sharp chisel to tap out all the waste in between the tails. Next, we'll transfer the tails onto the pin board using a pencil, and then at the table saw, we'll use a similar jig to make all of our pin cuts. Since we use a flat top blade, we can clear out literally all the waste on the pin boards and see if they fit right away. So I test fit the dovetails straight off the table saw jig, and one of them fits really well. You can see that that's a pretty tight fit, very happy about that. But unfortunately, the other three don't fit at all, so uh, not too happy about that. What I think happened is when I was transferring the lines from the tails to the pins, I must have moved it a little bit or I wasn't centered in the first place, and uh, well, they don't fit. We found the pins that were too big and then used a chisel to shave a tiny little piece off, and then after that it fit right on. Once we put the whole box together, you could see it was looking really good, but there were still a couple of gaps to deal with. To fix it, we grabbed a piece of scrap walnut, chiseled out a little piece from the end grain, sanded it, and then it fit right in. We used a plunge router to cut the grooves that the front piece is going to sit in. We're using this method because we're cutting stopped grooves. That means that they don't go all the way through the ends, or you'd actually see them poking through the dovetails. With the grooves cut, we can now move on to the front piece, which is cut from a quarter inch piece of walnut. From here, we did a quick dry fit, and it is looking awesome. Next up, we're going to 3D print and paint the logo that goes in front of the box that the light's going to shine through. Now, there is a lot of really small, intricate detail in here, and we actually tried to route it in a piece of wood first, but man, that was a disaster. So we decided that 3D printing was the way to go. 3D printing is one of those things that honestly makes you feel like you're in the future. Basically, you put your design in, and it starts to draw it one tiny little layer at a time. This one has a solid bottom and top layer, but the infill where it's hollow is only at about 5%. This thing is going to be about a quarter inch thick when it's done, and this takes an hour to print. Along with the skull, we also 3D printed the outline, and we taped it to the box with some double-sided scotch tape, and then used a sharp knife to trace the outline. The knife line gives you a really clean edge, so when we start to route out the inside, we have a really clear line to route to. We use a really small bit to hit the outside and get some nice detail. When it's done, we'll pull it out and head over to the vise, and we'll clean up a little bit with a file, but otherwise it's good to go. A few swipes with a sharp smoothing plane gets us a perfect surface, and then it's on to the glue up. Since the dovetails are proud, we're not going to be planing the surfaces flush, which means any squeeze out is going to be super obvious, so we have to be careful when we apply the glue, otherwise it's a pretty standard glue up. Once it's all together, we'll tap it home with a mallet, and then clamp it and let it dry. Once the glue is dry, we pulled off the clamps, brought the box over to the vise, and used a sharp chisel to chamfer the pins and tails. This is also the best time to hide those little pieces we added to fill the gaps a little burnishing with some hand plane shavings, and our surface is prepped. In between the 3D printed skull and the LED lights in the back, we're going to have this frosted piece of plastic that helps to diffuse the light. So as you can see, it kind of spreads out the color, and it'll just make it look better. We got a big sheet of this from the home center and cut out a slightly oversized piece, and then glued it to some cardboard to see what it was going to look like when we held it up in front of the light. 
It definitely looked good, so we were ready to move on. We cut it down to final size, test fit it in the box, and then use some blue tape to hold it in place. We need to cut a hole in the plastic for the eye, so we temporarily taped the skull in place and then traced it with a marker. We tried to cut it out with a knife at first, but nah. So <laughs> we went to the drill press, drilled out the waste, and then used a rotary tool to clean up all the edges. Next, we're gonna put a few coats of finish on to protect the wood and make it look shiny, but not too shiny. I did a little cleanup work on the tails and pins with a piece of sandpaper. Next, I finished it with a few coats of shellac, which is a really forgiving finish and super easy to apply. Shellac is pretty glossy, so we use a piece of 4 aught steel wool and some paste wax to take down the shine a little bit and polish it out. Alright, thanks to Jamie, we have a really beautiful finished case here. This thing is sweet, I'm super happy with how this is coming out. It is time to start putting it together to see if this is actually going to work. First step was to glue the plastic into the case, so we used some super glue to do that and just dabbed it all around the edges. Next up was to glue the 3D printed skull to the plastic. After we painted it white, we dabbed some super glue on the back, put it in place, made sure it was nice and centered, and then held it in place till the glue dried. We finished prototyping the electronics and everything is working really well. Honestly, I had no idea what I was doing when we started this. I just picked up Arduino recently and it's been super fun to learn how this stuff works. It's really easy to learn if you're familiar with basic programming and just like tinkering with things. But honestly, like I said, I had no idea how to do it in the beginning. I have learned this as I went. Now, let's take a look at the parts we're using. To power this whole thing, we're using four AA batteries inside this case. It also has a little on and off switch, which is really handy. That power goes into the Arduino Uno, which is sort of the brains of the whole thing. The piece in the middle is the sensor. That tells the Arduino what the temp and the humidity is, which is displayed on the screen, and then changes the color of the lights depending on the humidity. Using blue painter's tape, we roughed in the position of the components to make sure they fit. We knew where we wanted them to go from the plans, but this was the first time actually seeing if they would fit. Since it all fit fine, we went ahead and used hot glue to hold the LCD screen in place, as well as the little case for the Arduino Uno. This way the Arduino can snap in, but come out again if it ever needs to be replaced. In our plans, we actually used the battery case to hold the NeoPixel ring in place. We marked off exactly where it should go so that it will be centered in the case, and then used hot glue to hold it on. I was definitely worried that the hot glue was not going to hold up in this case, but it actually worked really well. The humidity sensor gets hot glued to the top left of the case, and then on the bottom, we hot glue in a small breadboard, which is going to serve as a junction for all of the power for the various components. Our design has everything being powered from the Arduino's 5 volt output, so it gets run into the breadboard and then split out to all the other components. The NeoPixel ring got three wires soldered on, the power ground, and the data input, and then we used some heat shrink tubing to keep those wires in place so that we could hot glue the battery plate into the box and have everything be in the right spot. The final step was to plug everything in, turn it on, and see what happens. That was a lot more complicated than we thought it was going to be and took maybe like three times as long, but it turned out really cool and we got it done. So let's take a look. Thank you for watching. This was a lot of fun to make. You know, we didn't know much about Arduino when we first started this. We've learned a lot along the way, and I already have like a million ideas I want to try for the next one. And hopefully you learned something too. We'd love if you liked the video and subscribe to our Wicked Makers channel. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We've got woodworking, we've got Arduino, we have X-Carve, we have Halloween, and we have babies. <laughs> we do. Well, we have one baby, but he's really cute, and you'll probably see him a lot. Until next time, stay wicked. Stay wicked! Hopefully I don't light this place on fire because I don't know how any of this stuff works.